Hi, bestie. How are you today? I hope you're having a fantastic day. I'm so happy you made it. Today, I'm going to be diving into my A Fate Inked in Blood reading blog. And so I have finished it, but I wanted to give you my spoiler free thoughts on it before I get into the actual vlog itself, because there are some elements, especially towards the end of the vlog that will spoil it for you. So let's just let's start chit chatting. I said let's start chit chatting, but it felt wrong to not say let's just jump right in. So let's just jump right in. I also wanted to tell you the shelves that I put it on for my Goodreads. So I put it on banter, fantasy, touch her and die. Um, he takes care of her and my bite shelf. And if you have read Air of Fire, you get the bite shelf. If you know, you know. I gave this book four stars. I really, I'm sorry, I'm in my car right now because the lighting is just amazing and I see people walking around outside and I get distracted. Anyways, so I felt like this was an extremely, extremely overhyped book. It was a pretty good book for the first one in a series. I think Kennedy told me that it's going to be a duology. I don't know. Sure. If it's a duology, then like it felt like the first book in a trilogy. I hope you get where I'm coming from on that one. It felt like the first book in a trilogy and just like not a whole lot happened other than like this forbidden romance kind of aspect. And is it even forbidden or just frowned upon? So if you have not heard of this book at all, A Fate Inked in Blood, so we're following Freya. It's just her point of view. In this universe, the gods will like gift their children, like their children, like people that they deem worthy, like a drop of their blood at their conception. And then they have those powers, but they don't know they have the powers until they like invoke the name of the god and then they have the powers. So Freya has been trying to keep hers under wraps this whole time, like growing up and then a few things happen and obviously she's not able to keep them under wraps anymore and so this jarl i don't even know what that's equivalent to like a general or something i should probably look that up but this jarl is like well there i like there was a prophecy that i would be the one to like find you and you would help me become king so i'm gonna keep you and marry you and the person that is like supposed to be protecting her and making sure that like nothing bad happens to her is Bjorn and just their journey of his dad's story like wanting to become king so yeah I'm, I'd say like this was like a pretty average book but I still enjoyed myself while I was reading because of Bjorn's like the way that Bjorn talks chef's kiss all of that being said if you already own the book I would read it however I wouldn't go out of my way to read this book. I didn't feel like there was anything groundbreaking happening, but I still had so much fun while I read it. So do with that what you will. Overall, the book felt a little anticlimactic. I felt like I was just waiting for this other layer of things and I just never got it. And I may get it in book two, but I just didn't feel like this was incredible kennedy was telling me that people were saying this was the next fourth wing relax just because it is a book with sprayed edges does not make it the next fourth wing so with that being said let's just jump right into the vlog look at those edges gorgeous i'm reading a fate inked in blood i'm gonna start recording my reactions i don't know if i'm gonna make a vlog like i had zero plans of doing that but i was like let's just see how i'm feeling i took the the jacket off of it because I don't like the texture of that one it's a no but I do have matching tabs and a highlighter so I'm really excited and yeah I'm buddy reading this with Kennedy I'll put her little um but I'm buddy reading this with Kennedy and I'm just really excited so I've heard so many good things let's just get into it I'm sorry she bought lemon juice and a sponge for what <laughs> for what okay one chapter in we do not know this man's name but he is so charming and i'm like i'm over here like 
smiling blushing like it's chapter one it's chapter one like not him getting on his knees in front of her and then being like where's your husband i want to kill him <laughs> i want to kill him so that like you can have sex with me no problem <laughs> okay fine no way he just said perhaps you plowed the wrong field sir sir i love him okay maybe it's too early for that it's too early for that but Oh my gosh. She picked up the axe and she did that. Thing she did? That. Fun fact about me, one horse will get me every single time. Every single time. One horse, I'm done. I'm done. I won't let you fall. My heart. What about you, Bjorn? Whose lives do you value? I think I know the answer. She really said, don't worry, I can swim. She said, your looks aren't good enough to compensate for your tongue. And he said, don't underestimate my tongue, Freya, especially in the dark. Oh my God. Okay, so a little update. See, not that far in, like 108 pages. I'm chapter, about to start chapter 12. Look at how beautiful. He wants one more night of freedom before being her bodyguard, essentially. He's gone. He's gonna skedaddle. Like, they will not be able to find him in the morning. But is it gonna be giving bodyguard romance or am I insane? I mean, both could be true. But bodyguard romance? Yes? I hope so. I don't know what it is about the, like, teaching you to fight trope or like that situation it just gets me every time it's usually in a fantasy book and so i feel like i like the whole one horse thing i also like the training like i'm gonna show you how to fight thing i, I don't know what that says about me but yeah hi hello me again i just like have not been in the mood to read recently like i haven't picked this book up in like three days but I'm getting there. I just will start reading and then my brain is just thinking about work and everything that I have going on in my life. And I'm like, wow, yeah, I should probably not and just focus on reading. Like why worry about my problems? So I'm gonna try to get back into it tonight. Do what you need to do to survive Born in Fire. You aren't bound by my word. He really just said like, go, it's okay. My axe disappears if I fall asleep and you were cold. Chivalry is not dead. I'm sorry, child of how many bloods? I think there's gonna be a twist here. He said, we're just gonna have to hide in plain sight. Okay, I see where this is going. I have a feeling that the person who trying to get through the wards, through the rune wards, and the person who was talking to King Harold was Bjorn's mom? Maybe I'm crazy. And then the scene with, why didn't you run? I can't, my heart can't take this. And don't tell me it was respect for my father you felt pressed between your thighs that night. <laughs> I love him. I'm obsessed. I want you now, and tomorrow, and all the tomorrows. Okay, like, I'm obsessed. This scene where he's keeping her warm is just doing something to me. Like, it's just hitting. Okay, so I finished, but I wasn't, like, stopping to let you know all my favorite parts as I was doing it. So now I'm gonna go through my Kindle highlights. So when he said... I will be at your back until I cross the threshold to Valhalla, Born in Fire, whether you want me there or not. Like, I love this energy that he keeps giving over and over again of like, I'm not leaving you. You can try, but it's just not happening. I loved when he was like, you are mine, even if it's just the two of us that know it. Like, I was eating this up, honestly. Her family annoys me. Her brother, I would have been fine if he died. And the best friend too. They're useless. Unless 
in another book, they're all of a sudden important, completely useless in this book. The whole thing with her mom and dad having a threesome with the god and that's the only way to save their son, it just was very weird. And I don't feel like that went anywhere. As soon as her eyes like were burning crimson, I was like, mm, that's gonna be like, and she feels like she's like fighting with herself in her head and i was like that's gonna be power number two like she obviously has two powers this is gonna be like a wrap up of how i felt about the whole book so there will be some spoilers so the ending steinun steinun knew we couldn't trust that bitch knew from the get-go we could not trust her so i was not surprised by her however this whole thing with bjorn and like harold I don't know how I feel about it because it just feels like she's just being used by literally everybody and she can't trust anybody but I feel like Bjorn was just like how do I I feel like Bjorn was just too in love with her like he was too invested in her well-being that I don't think that it was something that was kind of like it was just a, a plot like I don't think that he was playing her I think that he really does love her but he was also kind of playing her. That's what I think. I guessed the whole thing with his mom. They were dropping the hints and I was picking them all up. So very proud of myself for that one. I'm aware that this was just book one. However, I didn't feel like, like I felt them going over the cliff was just so anticlimactic. It was just like, okay. And then of course Harold's gonna find them. The ending just wasn't super satisfying. I felt like I was very hopeful for this like really big action packed thing happening at the end. And it was just kind of like, meh, it was fine. Also, they mentioned that one of the gods, like one of the children of the gods, like their power is to shift or like morph into other people. And we never got that in this book unless, unless it happened and we just don't know it. But I was really like holding out hope for that because I thought that would have been so cool. But with all that being said, I would give this book a solid four stars. Like it got the job done. I was having a good time. There were just things that could have been done better. I will be reading the second book for sure though. Yeah, I'll definitely be reading the second book. But I had a damn good time while I was reading it. To me, it didn't leave off on like a huge cliffhanger where I'm like, oh my God, I need to know what happens next. I'm more just like, okay, cool. I'm gonna read a different book now like I'm not hung up on this ending I'm not like oh my gosh I need the next book right now I can wait for the next book it just didn't really speak to me I don't know the cover the sprayed edges I was like this book is about to hit and I know I know that shouldn't have like determined how I felt about it before I, I started reading it but I was like oh it's about to hit and it was just fine it was okay like it was good it was good I liked Bjorn, but it got to a point where I was just kind of like, what else? Like, and then what? I hope that explains it properly. But thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.